Hello, everyone. Uh, as you may know already, um, I am Ben Asher, college counselor here at Marion. Um, hopefully you, you saw College 101 before this one, um, as this one will gear more towards the second half of the college search process, the timeline of senior year. And I'm going to go a lot more in depth on SCORE, the, our college search platform. Um, but with that being said, um, I will do a quick run through again, even though I probably met all of you and you may have heard from me, but in case you're seeing this and we haven't met, um, just a, a quick run through of who I am. I'm going to turn off my video, however, so you can see everything. Um, I've been in, I've been in college admissions since 2015 um, with experience in athletics uh, and previous to that in the military as well. So uh, my experiences lend pretty well um, to my ability to help students um, if they want to go to college just to be a student, if they want to go into athletics, or if they're thinking about a career in the military or an ROTC program. Um, again, this is our student services department. Again, if you're watching this, hopefully you know all of these people, but your counselors are tremendously important people who are going to be with you every step of the way and help you through much, much more than just the college process. Um, but Mr. Whistler, Ms. Sparwasser, and a new counselor that starts this year. Um, Ms. Tresek, our learning services coordinator. Mrs. Smith, who does everything for us. She is amazing. If you have not met her, you need to get down and meet her. Introduce yourself. She is amazing. Uh, and Ms. Kristen, our assistant principal, uh, again, a tremendous resource amazing person, and she is there to help as well. Now, what we're going to do for this presentation, we're going to jump right into the senior year timeline, because this is the stage of the actual college search process. Um, so the first thing we need to do starts the summer between. Well, really, it starts at the end of your junior year, but continues more into the summer of your before your senior year. And what we need to do is build uh, your skeleton list um, of colleges. This does not need to be perfect, but it just needs to be a rough idea of colleges that you're considering. You will have changes. Schools will continue to be added, removed from this list pretty regularly, and that's okay. But we need an idea of the colleges that you're looking at so we can start that process and we need to start visiting them. Um, it's very unrealistic to try and squeeze everything into one year. So if you hadn't started visiting in your junior year, it needs to start ideally this summer so you can start getting on some campuses and making some decisions on whether you like a school or not. Um, these schools need to be listed in SCORE. So in SCORE, this is how your counselor is going to send your uh, transcript to colleges once you make a decision or once you start applying. If they're not in SCORE as a school that you're applying to, we won't know where to send your transcripts. So please make sure that you're keeping that list up to date in SCORE. I will show you more about that later in this presentation. Um, Common App, if you plan to use it, you can actually register um, for your Common App ID um, before you start applying. Now, the reason you wanna do this is because you just wanna have your, your profile created and you can go in and add things um, and even start some of the basic information about it. Um, and it's just something you can do now that you don't have to do when you're in the middle of trying to actually apply. Just makes things a little bit quicker. Um, ACT, summer is a great time to dedicate to the ACT if you plan to retake it. So as a junior, you took it and you will have your results back before the end of your junior year. However, if you don't like your, your score, or plan to retake it or think you can do better, the summer is a time that you can focus on preparing for it, retaking it. Um, and here are some dates um, that are coming up for, for the ACT. You can also start brainstorming your, your essay or your personal statement. Again, if you wait till your applications are open to think about that, it's going to be a lot of extra stress on you if you haven't even started brainstorming that. You can actually usually look back and see uh, many of the prompts that colleges have used in the past. Um, and a lot of times they offer those prompts again. So you might actually be able to not only brainstorm, but start writing your, your essay or your personal statement and have it pretty much 
uh, rough draft before applications even open. Again, one more thing that you can do to make things less stressful later on. In August, September, you need to check in with your counselor and with me as your college counselor. What does your list look like? Is it a realistic list? Is it balanced? Um, does your schedule fulfill what is competitive for that college? Certain colleges want to see four years of math or three years of English and, or maybe four years of, of a language. And if you don't have that on your, on your um, schedule, we may want to make a change with your schedule pretty early. And if we wait till later in the year, we won't have time to make that change. The sooner we can, we can have that conversation, the better. Um, final updates to your resume. Again, you've, the idea is that you've kept this up to date over time. So it's not something you have to completely rebuild. As long as you've kept it up to date, go in. Any, any new things that happened over the summer or any new clubs or activities that you're joining as a senior, go ahead and add those on now. And that way it's, it's just done. And what are the extras that you're going to need? So start looking at the, that skeleton list that you created of colleges you're interested in and find out what they're looking for. Some schools want letters of recommendation. Some want those essays or personal statements. Others want a resume. Others will ask for other things. The more you can start looking at that now and preparing, the better. You may have a list of colleges that don't require an essay and don't require a resume. So you don't even have to think about those. Or you may have a list of five schools that all want letters of recommendation and all want an essay. Okay, then we need to start focusing on that and preparing, preparing those pieces now. So again, we're not waiting till last minute to try and do it to meet the deadlines. And it's important you do not let your grades slip. A lot of students will realize that colleges are making an admission decision based on their freshman, sophomore, and junior grades. However, if you are on the line or on the verge of being admitted, a college may ask to see first semester grades of your senior year. And if you have a bad first semester or you take it a little bit late, a little bit easy, this is not a good sign for the college and they may deny you because of it. So do not let your grades slip, stay focused and do well. In October, this is where most of your applications are going to um, start to be uh, available or not available, but there's deadlines are just gonna start to come up. 90% of early application plans, so EA, REA or ED, have a November 1st or 15th deadline. If you miss those deadlines, you miss the deadline. There is no, there's no leeway. And they will not give you an exemption. Um, it is very, very rare. Something major would have had to have happened for you to get an exemption. So you need to stay focused. That is why doing all of those steps ahead of time are going to help you in this stage. That way things are done and you can just submit them. If you're not applying to one of those above decisions, um, you should still try to get your applications in uh, around this October or early November stage. You don't want to wait too long, um, especially if they're going to, especially if they ask for additional materials or anything like that. If your application is ready, you should submit it and not delay. You can only apply to 20 schools on the Common App. That's a lot. If you're applying to more than 20 schools, um, I would really encourage you to come down and have a conversation um, with me or your counselor um, because 20 schools is quite a bit to apply to. Um, application checklist. Once you've applied, they're going to, you're going to get a, essentially a checklist from every college. It's going to tell you what's missing, what's still required from them. Make sure you pay attention to these um, and do not miss deadlines. Some applications are due on a certain date. However, additional materials have a second date of when those things need to be submitted. So you don't want to be a student who applies, thinks that you're all done, but then misses a, an additional document deadline and you don't get considered for admission. Make sure you're paying attention to each school's individual checklist. And college visits, you need to start, you should be doing this, you should be on some campuses. Um, it is better to get to those campuses early um, so you know either you love it and you want to keep it on your list or you hated your experience and you can go ahead and remove it or maybe not even apply to it. Deadlines. 
These deadlines are important. I've mentioned it once and I'm going to continue to mention it. You need to keep track of your deadlines. Um, you should not be running up to the final days of a deadline. You should be, you should shoot for a target date of anywhere from one to two weeks ahead of the deadline. If in case there's an issue, I have met students who applied hours before the deadline and realized that when they hit submit, that they didn't hit the signature button, they didn't sign their application, and it was never actually submitted. And they call the school, and as I said, the school does not give exemptions. You need to shoot for earlier than your deadline so you have wiggle room in case something goes wrong. If you're taking a second or a third round of the ACT, November and December are the last dates that you'll be able to get your, your results back in time to be able to submit those for consideration for either admission or for scholarships, okay? You, if you take it any later than that, your results won't get back in time and the school may not consider them for scholarship or even for admission. Um, scholarships, the merit scholarships are typically automatic, so you don't have to do anything for those. But once you've applied, the individual schools will have specific programs and scholarships that you can apply for individual um, talent scholarships or um, what they may call a um, an uh, endowed scholarship. And you want to just make sure that as soon as you've applied, that you're doing that. For when I was a director of enrollment, um, once a student was admitted is when they gained access to those scholarships. They couldn't see them beforehand. So make sure once you've applied and been admitted that you are starting that process. December and January, this is where you need to finalize um, all of your applications. For any of those colleges that, that have a later deadline, um, I would still recommend that this is the latest that you submit applications. You don't want to be waiting around too long, especially because now is also the time starting in 2023 where the FAFSA is going to open up. Okay, You don't want to be doing college applications and trying to do FAFSA all at the same time. It's a lot to handle. It's a lot to do. So the sooner you can get applications done and move to the next stage, which is FAFSA, the better. So again, starting this year, the FAFSA is now not opening until December. Used to be October, but they've moved it uh, and made some significant changes to it. We will have a financial aid night coming up this year. I'm not sure on the date yet. We have not set that, um, but we will work with um, our... Um, the people we've used in the past to come out. Um, previously, it was Mary Chase from Creighton University. We will work with her to see if she still wants to do that for us and what dates she might want to do it now at the date and there's been major changes to it. Um, a couple of things I would I would say, Education Quest um, is an organization in the state of Nebraska, which is free. Um, it's an extremely helpful resource um, here in Nebraska. It also has its own scholarship search, um, but when it comes to the FAFSA, they are experts and extremely, extremely helpful. I would strongly recommend if this is your first time going through it and you need help with the FAFSA, log on, check them out, and see if you can schedule an appointment. ED and EA decisions start to come out during this time. Um, if you're accepted ED, you need to withdraw all of your other applications. That is because early decision or ED is a binding contract. EA, early action, they are not binding. Um, however, it, it is important that um, you're paying attention to your decisions. I mean, if you've decided on a school that you're not attending, go ahead and, and remove those applications. But for ED, once you've been admitted, you need to withdraw all of those applications. Um, visits, uh, I put that down there. I, I've said it so many times, the visit is one of the most important pieces in the college search process. If you've been admitted to a school and you haven't visited, but you're really considering attending, you need to try and find a way to get onto that campus. It is important. It is the easiest way to tell if a school is for you or if a school is for your daughter. February, March, if you have any late additions to your, your college list, uh, you may want, this is the time you're going to want to get those applications in as quickly as possible. Again, you don't want to delay. The more you delay, the quicker you're going to have to do things uh, on the back end, and it's just not a fun process. So as soon as the school pops up on your list, get those applications in. 
by this time, you'll likely have gotten all your results, whether you've been admitted or denied. Um, some schools won't release until even later, um, but for the most part, you'll you'll have a lot of your decisions in hand. Um, and you'll want to make sure that if you were admitted, make sure you let the school ask the school if you have if they've received your FAFSA or if they or if you haven't filed your FAFSA. Make sure the school knows that they may wait and not even send you a financial aid package if you don't notify them that you're not filing. They may be waiting for a FAFSA that they don't know that they're not going to get. Financial packages, um, again, we're not sure with the changes that have been implemented when these will come out, um, but it should hopefully be around this time. You'll be getting some official financial award packages. Some of them will be available only in the student portal. So you will have gotten, once you're admitted, you'll get login information to create your student portal for each school. You need to save that information somewhere. Make sure you can log in. Because this may be the only place that you can access your financial aid information. Other schools will send it via mail, but there are some schools that have gone completely electronic, and this is the only way that you're going to get them. I would offer one tip. If a school is only giving it to you in the student portal or an electronic copy, print it off and save it in one folder. That way, when it comes time to reviewing schools and overall costs, you can actually just pull them out on, on the table, lay them all out, and see breakdown of costs. Schools will also break down costs differently. So if you have any confusion, I would encourage you to come in and see me, and I can look at those packages and tell you what those in costs are, as some of them will try and be very tricky with the way that they package things. So it looks better than what it actually might be. Um, some scholarship and special programs have interviews and events that you should be attending, um, like an honors program or a particular scholarship. This is February, March, sometimes when you're invited to do those interviews, um, and you don't want to miss those. So make sure during this time you're on the lookout for those invites, for those interviews, and make sure that if you're considering it, that you need to be on top of those. April, if you're going to be filing any appeals, whether it's an admissions appeal or a financial appeals appeal, this is the time where you should be doing it. If you wait any later, there's not going to be any money, especially for finances, there's not going to be any money available to do a financial appeal. They won't have anything additional to give you. Um, but if you can do this pretty early, there may be some, some lingering money out there that they can make some changes with your financial aid package. Uh, an admissions appeal, if you were rejected from any schools, um, this is a time where you can actually you can say, hey, we got our results back from semester one of our senior year. We had a really good year. We'd like to be reconsidered. Um, it's okay um, to do that. There's no negative light to it, but you should understand that if you were denied the first time and then eventually you were admitted, there's very likely not going to be any award money that comes with it. So it would be a, a full cost out of pocket if you do end up getting um, the admissions decision overturned. Um, financial appeal is a situation where um, there may be an extenu extenuating circumstance. Maybe there's a major financial change. Uh, sometimes there's, um, uh, unfortunately, there's, there's a loss of income. Whatever that might be, um, there should really be a, a special circumstance of why you're asking for a financial appeal. Some schools, not many, but some schools will allow you to financially appeal just based on the fact that another school is more affordable. However, it's not common. So don't think that you can file an appeal with every school and hopefully get more money. Many schools will tell you flat out, no, we do not do that. But it is okay to ask. There is nothing wrong with asking. The worst they can say is no, and nothing else will change. A final decision, May 1st is National Decision Day. It is the most common deposit deadline for colleges. Be sure that you're submitting your deposit on time. Not all schools set this as a requirement. It is a recommendation that you let them know by May 1st, but it is not required. But there are schools that on May 1st, if they do not have a deposit from you or a decision, that they will offer your spot to another student. So make sure you are paying attention to any final decision deadlines. 
May, June, and July, once you've deposited, the school is going to send you a full checklist of things that you need to be doing in order to make sure that when it comes time to moving on campus, you have everything done and in line. And here are some of those. I'm not gonna list them all out. Again, this will be available to you um, so you can look over, um, but things like joining a social media group so you can find a roommate, summer orientation. They'll do on-campus events, accepted student events, um, final transcripts need to be sent in, registration for classes. All of these things are things that you need to keep in mind um, once you've made your final decision. Now we're going to shift gears. We're going to talk about the college essay, some scholarships, and then we're going to jump into score so I can show you how you can use this as a part of your college search. So the college essay, most importantly, you need to be authentic. Um, you should not write in a way that is not you. So if you're a funny person, you should let that come out through your essay. If you're a very academic um, student, then that should come out in your essay. Whatever, whatever your personality is should come through in your writing. Um, it should not, <coughs> excuse me. You should not try and write in a way that is not you. It will come off very unnatural and it will affect the, the it will affect your admission decision and the way that they view your um, essay. Focus on deeper themes or thoughts. So um, I have seen a number of fun and unique essays. Some of them come off very well. However, some of them do not. Um, and that is because they may be talking about something that has no actual thought process to it. Um, they just thought it was a cool subject that they could write on and they're not truly an expert in that or, or have, um, they don't have a, a true um, thought that they're giving to it. They're just writing about it because they thought it seemed like the right thing to write about. There should be a deeper theme or thought to your application or to your application essay. The number one mistake in all college essays is undoubtedly the fact that students will simply rewrite their resume. In your application, you're already providing all of your accomplishments, all of the activities you've been involved with, um, any volunteer work that you may have done. And if you simply rewrite that in essay format, you have provided nothing new to the reader. Your reader wants to learn who you are in your essay. So do not rewrite your resume, add something else. Think unique, okay? It is very unlikely that you will write your best essay in a single draft. This is 100% true. You should not, you should not write it one time and call it quits. There should be some form of revising or at least having other people read it. Um, repeat this process as needed. Uh, and what I mean by that is write it, read it, revise it, go back, do it again, fix it, read it, revise it, have other people read it, revise it from what they say until you can come down to your final, final draft. Scholarships. There are millions of scholarship dollars available. Um, I put this in there. They will not find you. They will not extend deadlines and they will not be there in a couple of months. So simply saying, I'll get that, I'll get to that next month. Um, you're gonna delay it and you're gonna miss the deadline and you're not gonna get that money. Um, there are so many types of scholarships available. The first one that you should focus on is the college specific scholarships. These, almost every single college have scholarships that are available through a portal um, or at, right after the application process. For instance, UNL has a scholarship statement due by February 1st. In order to qualify for any additional scholarships at UNL, you must submit your scholarship statement by February 1st. There are no other deadlines and there's only the one scholarship statement. There's not multiple applications, there's only one. If you miss February 1st, they will not give you an extension. If you miss it, you miss it. So make sure you're paying attention to those scholarships college specific scholarship deadlines. The next ones you should consider are your local or state scholarships. 
Um, these can be through education quests. These can be through local organizations, churches, or schools, um, or ones that I hear about just from local companies. I will put out there uh, available to all students, and you can find that through College for Seniors in Canvas. The last thing, last place you should go is for the national scholarships, which are those college scholarship search engines like Going Mary, Niche, College Board, or Scholarship Owl. The reason that it's this order is college-specific scholarships, you're competing against only students that have been accepted to that college. The local scholarships or state scholarships, you're competing with only the people in the local or state area, and nationally, you're competing nationally, right? So the chances of you getting a college-specific scholarship are far greater than that of a local or state scholarship, and that's even greater than that of a national scholarship, as that could be tens of thousands of applications. Categorizing schools, reach, target, and safety. A reach school is a school that you have a lower likelihood of being admitted to. A target school is a school that you have strong chances of being admitted to, but it is possible, depending on the applicant pool, that you might not get admitted. And then a safety school is a school that you will almost certainly be admitted to. And this typically includes all of your backup plans. There is no secret number to have in each one of these categories, but your list should be balanced. So when I say that, you should not have 10 applications and all 10 of them are reach schools. There's a chance if you do that, you're not going to be admitted to any of those schools. Or on the other hand, if you have 10 schools you're going to apply to, they shouldn't all be safety schools. You should be reaching a little bit. You should have some type of target. You may be only applying to five schools, one of which is a reach, two of which is a target, and then two of which are safety schools. That's okay. That's balanced. You may have 10 schools and you may have three reaches, five targets, and two safeties. Again, there's no secret number. It's dependent upon how many schools you're applying to. But you should, again, have a couple of schools that you're stretching and you're balancing this list um, that you're at least evaluating all options that you have. This is just a rough example. This is not a perfect science. Um, one school may fall into a different category for each student, depending on what they're involved with or if there's any extracurriculars. But this is just an idea of, of how a, a list might look or differ from for student to student. This is SCORE. This is the college search platform that you've likely heard a lot about. Um, and I'm going to take you through it so you can kind of see what it is. So this is the student profile. This is our test profile, um, but this is what it looks like for the student as well. So in the top right corner, there's something that says download resume. As we go through this, you'll see you can actually input all activities, accomplishments, volunteer hours, work experience. And once that's all in there, you go to download resume and it'll actually put it into a Word format and it is editable. But you could use that to submit for a job application if, if your daughter wanted as well. All the personal details will automatically be populated um, from registration at Marion. The GPA will be listed in here as well, both weighted and unweighted GPA. And then any test scores that the student has, um, ACT or PSAT, those can be available as well. Personal bio or statement. Um, this can be edited for whatever the case may be. So if you're applying for a job, you'll want to edit this so it, it's, it works for um, that type of application. Or if you're applying to a college, it's going to be very different. This is a one that we put in there, but this will populate into the resume once you hit download. This is where you add all of your um, activities and achievements. So there's four categories, work experience, athletics, community service or volunteer work, and then clubs and activities. Um, so the student, um, for you guys as students and parents, just so you can see, um, you would just go to the top, hit add, and you would type in whatever the title is, the years that this that um, you've been involved with it, how many hours per week or weeks per year, and then a brief description of what that is. Again, you can add as many as you as you want, and then when you hit download resume, it will automatically down or put it all onto that for you. This is the, when it pops up, this is what it looks like. Selecting the category, you pick one of those four categories and you would title it. Um, I would title it whatever that um, the, the position is. So as you can see for this athletic, I titled it 
volleyball and then I put position on there. Um, that way, if I was looking at a college and I wanted a coach to see it, they would see not only that I'm involved in volleyball, but right in the title, they see my position as well. And then for work experience, I put certified babysitter. Um, grades participated. This is where you would put if you participated freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year. Hours per week, weeks per year is pretty self-explanatory. And then the description. The description, I want to talk about that for a quick second. The wording in this matters. Um, so I used an example here, um, if I were a member of the Student Athletic Trainers Association. So an okay or kind of blah example would be, I am a member of the Student Athletic Trainers Club. I'm responsible for pregame setup and assisting with in-game athletic training needs. I took three college courses for athletic training. I am also CPR certified. Okay. I kind of get it, but I don't quite understand what is pregame setup. What is assisting with in-game athletic training needs? What three courses did you take? None of that really kind of helps describe it. A good example would be, I'm a three-year member of the Student Athletic Trainers Association. By putting in three years, I've shown that I'm not only a member of that club, but I'm dedicated because I've been doing it for three years. As a student assistant, I am responsible for ensuring all athletic training equipment is adequately stocked prior to practices and games. I assist with on-field medical evaluations as well as pre-game and practice injury prevention. This is much. This is a much more detailed description of my skills and my responsibilities within this. So as you can see, when you're putting this in there, you don't want to just put in, I'm a volleyball player and I play at Marion. I want to put in much more detail so the readers – so the um, admissions committee at the school that I'm applying to understand a much higher in-depth review of, of what I am actually doing in this club. They also may not even know what a student athletic trainer's club is. We may be one of the only schools that has that. So you want to be able to describe what it is you're involved with. Um, you can actually in here put in college preferences as well. So majors. Um, type of school, size of school, location, all kinds of things. And you can actually put in careers as well. There's a career survey that the students can can take through SCORE, um, but they may have an idea of what they want to do. They can actually save that as a career and get updates um, and get um, schools sent to them based on those preferences. There's also a, a neat thing with SCORE where you can actually download um, and upload, or you can upload files, so anything. So if you write a rough draft of your college essay and you don't want to lose it and you want to keep it in one place, you can actually upload it into SCORE. So all of your college-related documents are saved in SCORE. You can save them to your personal computer or wherever else as well, but if you want to keep them in one handy place, put them all in SCORE, and that way you know exactly where to go. Oh, I need to find that rough draft. Where did I save that at? in score. I've saved it there. Go in, find it, update it, and re-upload it. That way everything stays there. Maybe you get an achievement or an award and you think that the college might want to see that. Come in, upload a, a copy of the file here. So if a college does ask for it, it's in one simple place and you know exactly where it's at. College search function of score is what is really unique about it and why we made the switch to score. So you can actually, it starts off, it gives you every college that's available here in the United States. You can filter it based on an, any number of categories, location, major, school size, school type, whether they're test optional, if they have ROTC, if they're a religious um, affiliated school, the admission type, how far from home, so many categories um, that you can filter them off of. You add those in and then it will break down and say, there are now only 242 colleges available that meet the criteria that you just put in place. And then if you want to start to compare colleges at the top, you can say, okay, I want to add this to my compare. And you can list, I believe it's up to um, four or five schools that you can compare at one time. Uh, and then you can continue to compare them down the road. Um, but then you can go to the school's page. This is an example of the school that I worked at You can go to their page. This right here, if I click here, this is actually a virtual tour. So as soon as I click on that, I go immediately to their uh, you visit page and I'm on a virtual tour of their campus. 
There's also subcategories underneath that, an overview, academics, admissions, cost and aid, and student life. Each one of these arrows provides you an overview of the college's information. Um, these are extremely helpful. The biggest one that I wanna show you is this admissions tab. If I click on admissions, it tells me what the admit rate is for that particular school, what the average SAT score is for that school, average ACT score, and then these green dots. These green dots are actually Marion students who have applied to this particular school. The green dots are admitted, the red dot, the red triangles are denied students, and yellow and blue are either waitlisted or deferred students. So the unique thing about this is if I wanted to get admitted to this school, I know that I likely need to get a little over a 3.5 GPA and above a 24 ACT because most of the students in here have been admitted. There are a few that weren't. There may be special circumstances to those. Maybe they were applying to an engineering major and that one required um, some additional criteria and that's why they weren't admitted. But over 90% of the students in this category, in this area, were admitted. But once I got outside of this line, below a 3.5, below a 24, I start seeing much more, many more denials. I start seeing many more wait lists and deferments. Um, sometimes there'll be outliers down here. Um, I'm not sure where that comes from. It may be um, a, a bad piece of data. Or that student may have some type of hook. They may have been an athlete or um, something else that somehow they were admitted. Or maybe they they um, ended up <coughs> getting admitted to a, like an undecided program or um, getting an, uh, an extra academic help for it. So for this school, roughly categorized about a 3.6 and a 26 would put me in a, a good position to be admitted. With that, um, I'm going to kind of leave it there. I will say there's much more to this process. Obviously, this is just um, a small portion of information through the college search process. The main goal of this was to be able to get you um, an insight into SCORE, how you can use that in your college search. Um, it's a tremendous piece that we've added starting this year. Um, we're still learning through it as well. Um, but I am happy to sit down and review it more in depth with you if you would like. Um, I hope this was helpful. We will continue to do these in person as well, as well as other sessions um, that I have planned for this year. So please be on the lookout for those. But with that, I am going to call it quits for this presentation. Um, like I said, if you need anything, I am here. Uh, the Student Services Department is here to help. Um, and we, we look forward to seeing you soon.